Welcome to the Wasteland News Network. Today is June 10th, 2021, and a new Inside the Vault was just released. So let's go over everything that's new in Fallout 76. And the highly anticipated E3 showcase with both Xbox and Bethesda sharing the spotlight this year is Sunday, June 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. British Summertime. You can catch all of it live on twitch.tv slash Bethesda. And that will begin the live coverage at 1 p.m. Eastern. And that's all this Sunday, June 13th. So hopefully we might get an update on Fallout 76 or Starfield or the new Indiana Jones games and everything in between. So looking forward to that this Sunday. Also, grab some friends and get ready to storm the wasteland because in celebration of E3, they have a free play week for Fallout 76 starting today. You can download Fallout 76 on your platform of choice to experience the game completely free until June 16th. During free week, they're also kicking off a limited preview of Fallout First. So you'll be able to check out the scrap box and the survival tent. Those are the best things that Fallout First has to offer. So all you have to do is head to the Atomic Shop first to claim the free Fallout First limited preview item. And then you have to unlock the scrap box from the Fallout First page in the Atomic Shop. And then head, head in-game to try out the features. The tent thing is, is amazing. Additionally, you'll be able to burn through those early game levels at twice the usual speed because it is a full week of double XP in all game modes. Fantastic. Finally, Fallout 76 is on sale for a limited time. All of the progress you make during free week will remain intact and you can head and purchase the game at a later, later date for a discount of 67% off. And a new Brotherhood of Steel event called The Coming Storm. It'll be a limited in-game event. It begins on June 15th. That's next Tuesday. And once the event begins, stop by the Atomic Shop to claim the Brotherhood of Steel backpack skin for free. You'll need to have the backpack equipped in order to earn event rewards. And don't worry if your character hasn't already learned how to craft a backpack because they'll also, you'll be able to claim a small backpack plan for free in the shop. So once you're wearing the new pack, venture out and take on daily challenges and they'll require you to complete in-game events in specific regions of Appalachia or capture workshops. Each daily challenge will award you with a free consumable like a lunchbox, perk card pack or repair kits. And by completing daily challenges, you'll also earn progress toward a recurring weekly challenge that will offer a different brotherhood themed cosmetic reward each week, like a player icon, a Pip-Boy skin, and new flags for your camp. If you complete at least two weekly challenges before the coming storm concludes on July 6th, you'll also unlock the new Brotherhood of Steel recon helmet pictured above. So it's going to run from June 15th through till July 6th. And I think that's a bit telling. I think not long after July 6th, we should see Steel Rain update. And I actually haven't played it in the PTS. I'm waiting for it to hit the live game. I'm very excited. I'm holding off until it hits the, the real live version. And this is the not so great news for those of you who play Nuclear Winter. They are actually shuttering it down. As a development team, we view Fallout 76 as a game that is continually evolving with each update we release. We love adding new ways for you to enjoy Appalachia, whether through quest lines, events, daily ops, new features, quality of life improvements, or even gameplay modes. When we first introduced Nuclear Winter, we were thrilled to watch so many players from our community, as well as many newcomers head f dive headfirst into our take on the ruthless last player standing battle royale genre. I played a few times. It was great. Over time, however, we've seen the vast majority of players prefer to explore other aspects of the game. It has also become tougher to pull full nuclear winter lobbies together without also making sacrifices on match wait times. Additionally, 
We found it challenging to provide meaningful updates for Nuclear Winter while also developing and supporting the other content for Adventure Mode in recent and upcoming updates. With all of this in mind, we are currently planning to sunset Nuclear Winter Mode in an update coming in September. We know that some of you are incredibly passionate about Nuclear Winter and that you may find this news disappointing. Ending support for the mode was a difficult decision and not one we've made lightly. We're still working to provide methods of PvP combat for those who enjoy squaring off against former vault dwellers. And a little later this year, we will release details on how we plan to offer players even more ways to play Fallout 76. I'm pretty sure that is going to be happening, and they've alluded to that for in the AMA about a month ago, that that was going to happen in private mode, in, in uh, private worlds. Uh, additionally, we're going to compensate everyone who participated in Nuclear Winter from those who enjoyed a single match to our most hardened overseers. Whether you occasionally dabbled in Nuclear Winter or fought your way through thousands of matches, we want to ensure that your efforts are properly rewarded. When Nuclear Winter goes offline, we're going to fill your character's pockets with perk coins, which can be used to upgrade your legendary perks in Adventure Mode. Each character will receive six perk coins per overseer rank they have achieved up to a maximum of 600 as well as one perk coin for each overseer ticket they earned up to a max of 200. All players who completed at least one nuclear winter match will also receive a nuclear winter themed pennant for their camps. So perk coins, it's pretty good, pretty good. I'll miss the mode though. And you can continue to earn Nuclear Winter rewards in Adventure Mode. I think I was up to rank 75 or 76, and I really wanted to get those last suits of Inferno Power Armor. Uh, Nuclear Winter offers a variety of Overseer rank-up rewards, and we'd like to ensure that you can still unlock them through other means. Sometimes, like, sorry, some items like Vault Boy statues will remain exclusive to those who earn them. Others, such as power armor and weapon paints, outfits, camp objects, and more, will be awarded by completing events including Scorched Earth, Project Paradise, Encrypted, a colossal problem, and even hunt for the treasure hunter. They'd like to thank everyone in the community who spent time competing in Nuclear Winter. It will remain online until September, which means you still have plenty of time to squeeze in some more matches. While we have decided to disable this mode, Fallout 76's future remains very bright. We can't wait to show more details with all of you on all of the new features and adventures we're planning to bring to the game throughout 2021 and for years to come. So let's hope we get that uh, new features and everything, new adventures as quickly as possible. This is an amazing game. I love playing it. And uh, I'll see you guys out in the wasteland.